Hello, let's have a look at composing functions together. So this is a um, problem you might have where you want to use um, something like jux or every to apply a function to something else. <coughs> but actually you want to apply two functions to that thing. Like, for example, making something faster as well as chopping it up, that kind of thing. Um, and what you can do is take two functions, two transformations or whatever, and turn them into one um, using uh, an operator, which is the period or full stop. Um, so let's have a look. So let's say you had this pattern. Um, nice. So... Um, that's already squizzed a bit, but it's just a kick snare pattern. Um, and say you wanted to chop it up and reverse it. So that's something that's quite common because um, if you chop something into bits and then reverse the pattern afterwards, then you're reversing all the bits and it sounds interesting. Um, so one way of doing that is by... Um, say you wanted to do it every third cycle, you could just put it into separate everything. So every three cycles, chop it into eight bits. Every three cycles, reverse it, and it'll just apply both of them every three cycles. So that works, but it's just quite a lot of typing because you are saying every three twice. Um, and when programmers see repetition like that, they get a bit itchy um, and um, they want to make it so there's no repetition. Even if you're an hour grave musician and you love repetition in other ways, um, you might want to cut down the amount of typing that you're doing. So um, this is what you can do instead. So like I said, you can use the period or the full stop, whatever you call it, um, and that joins them together. So it'll... Um, this will make a new function out of these two. Um, so the input goes into chop8, and then dot takes that um, output from that, and then pipes it into rev, um, and then that will be what ha is passed to every three. It's kind of a combination of two functions. Um, so basically it's just a way of piping one thing into another. So you're taking chop8 and piping the output of that into rev, which is then sending into every. So that's actually exactly the same as the previous line in terms of how it sounds, but it's just uh, got maybe um, seven or eight fewer characters in it. Um, at this point, you might be thinking, well, what about that dollar? Isn't that doing the same thing? Um, and it is doing something pretty similar. Uh, the dollar takes what's on its right, in this case, all of this, and passes it to the function on its left, which is all of this. Um, so that's kind of piping things. Um, but that's taking that as the input to this. Whereas the dot is doing something slightly more complicated. It's taking this as a function um, before it's had any inputs and sort of joining into this other function um, into a new function. So on this, with this side, there's a function on this side and there's a function on this side. Um, with this, there's a value on this side and there's the function on this side. Um, so with the dollar, it's taking a value, piping it into a function as an input. And with the dot, it's taking a function and taking the output of that function and piping it into the input of another function to take make a new function. Um, so if that's still confusing, um, ask questions or just play around with it until it starts making sense. You kind of get a kind of feel just by using it and playing with examples like this one. Um, right. So you can do this for more than one function. So in this case, it's um, taking fast and then making that go into chop and then making that go into the reverse. Um, so every third repetition, it's going twice as fast. Um, or 
or you can think of it as going twice as dense because it fits twice as much into that one cycle. Um, just actually thinking back about the order of things. So um, if you think about the chop going into the rev, um, the order actually matters then. So you want to, in this case, all the bits are being chopped up before the pattern's being reversed. So the order of those eight bits are being reversed. Um, and this happens for every cycle, uh, every, sorry, every sound individually. So that BD, for example, will be chopped into eight bits. And then when the whole pattern gets reversed, the actual bits of the BD will get reversed. So it'll sound kind of as if it's going backwards. Um, but if I had it like this, then the pattern would get reversed and then it would get chopped. So then those bits wouldn't be reversed in the end. So you can hear it's kind of still chopped, um, but it's those chopped up bits aren't reversed in the end, like they are there. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Um, so there's one more example here, um, just to show that this also works for effects. So here I'm adding a room effect, which is uh, the reverb. So this is something we looked at in an earlier video, how you can, um, by um, taking away, because um, the operator is kind of like a function anyway with two inputs. So if you don't give it its left-hand input, um, you end up with something which um, is, yeah, it's missing an input. And so it kind of turns into a function that takes that as the input, um, if that makes sense. Or you can just think of it as taking an effect off the end, including its um, hash for joining it on to the pattern um, to make it um, a function on its own. Um, so that will work as well. I've just moved the squiz into this. So now it's only the every third cycle that gets squizzed. Um, OK, so that's about it. Um, I'll be back shortly with a, a quick session on the er function. Um, whereas we've been talking about the compositions of functions into new functions, I'll be jumping over to look at the er function, um, which is about composing in the musical sense. Um, but of course, also involves functions as well. <laughs> All right, see you in a sec. Or whenever you look at the next video, I'll see you then. Time is strange.